Yeah, now the uh, feud with the Rockers, that was great. Uh, everybody knows what kind of worker Shawn Michaels is. Uh, Marty, Jannetty is Marty Jannetty is a great worker in his own right. Um, when they came up with the angle with the Rockers that we did with the megaphone and all that, we, we had discussed it and worked it and fine-tuned it until we did it. And um, it just worked out perfect. It, you know, Sean's a hell of a salesman. And he, and it hit him pretty solid with that megaphone too. And, um, but it, we knew that because that's the angle. If we, if we miss it, it's gonna, that's it, you know? So I told him, I said, don't worry. You know, he said, oh, just do what you gotta do. So we nailed him with it, it was pretty good. And it, that's where we were official. I mean, the, the people hated our guts. I had death threats and everything, it was great. And you were actually main eventing a lot of shows with yep. that match. Yep. And having the first Iron Man matches in WWE history, which were then called marathon matches. I Correct. Guess. Yeah. Do you want to tell us your memories of those marathon matches? Back th back then, uh, Pat Patterson was booking the territory with uh, Vince. He was doing a lot of the matchmaking. Uh, I had a lot of matches with Pat Patterson. I had some hour matches with him. And <clears throat> at one point, I had spoken to to uh, Pat. I love to work in the ring. Um, I told Pat, you know, I said one thing that would be, I said, with these guys, I'd like to work some long matches. You know, because a lot of matches were 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 14 minutes, you know. And I said, I'd like to work some matches. I said, it would give the business cred credibility. It would give the wrestlers credibility because I said, damn, these guys are good athletes to be able to go like that. I said, I'd like to be able to have some long matches with them. So he said, that's where they came up with the idea of the marathon match. I said, what is that? So he says, the, we'll go one hour and I was like okay and I like that because I've done many hour matches before and my first one I was 17 years old my first hour match um, so I liked the idea with them I knew it was going to be fine and uh, so they booked the marathon match at the end of the hour the team that had the most falls wins at the end of the hour it was one to one in the falls we go into sudden death overtime then we just play by ear. It could go 10, 15, 20 minutes. We went as long as 20 minutes after. It was like an hour and 20 minute match. We were on last for that, evidently, because you know it's, it was a hard match to follow for, for other guys. And the, the, they, they booked a couple of them, and they were like, wow. And the people were, it, it attained what I hoped it would attain. And for the business, it was good. So, so then they booked it. But we did the major cities all over. And the, one one funny story was uh, we were touring. We were over in Europe for a while. On the way back from Europe, because we were jet lagged all the time, you know. And sometimes you wake up in a plane, you look outside, you don't even remember where you're going. I remember that going to Texas one time, coming back from uh, uh, Europe. Take my plane ticket out. Oh yeah, I'm going to Houston. Okay, get, you know, you get so jet lagged. We fly back from Europe. We'd been there for ten days. Land, go to Nassau Coliseum. Okay, I look on the wall, I look at the card. I see marathon match, the Rougeos and the Rockers. I remember the agent that was there, I told him, I said, I said, this is a rib, right? This is a joke. And at that point, it's not like we're green in the WWF. We'd been on the road for over three years. And I'm like, this is a rib, right? He says, no. I said, bullshit. I said, this can't. I said, we're so jet lagged, I have a hard time standing up. And I said, we're in a marathon match. He says, I know, he says, they messed up. They didn't realize when they booked it that you were just coming back from Europe. And I said, like, this is a rib, you know, so I was trying to mind myself. We had our marathon match and it's the next day I was in Houston, an afternoon show also. <laughs> got back to the hotel, got to sleep. I was gonna change my flight to leave later because we had like a 6.30 flight in the morning to Houston. I said, I gotta change this. I can't, can't sleep for four hours and get up and go to Houston, you know. Went to change it, and then all of a sudden uh, we couldn't. So I said, "Oh, we'll get there and we'll go to sleep." We got to Houston, get to the hotel, check in, go to bed. We said it was like uh, one o'clock. So we said, I "Got to bed, sleep for two, three hours to be in shape to work that night in Houston." All of a sudden, I don't know why, a fluke. I got up, I took the sheet out of my my wrestling bag, and I looked. I said, "Jacques, it's an afternoon show." It was a two o'clock show. At that point, it was like 1.30. I was just falling asleep. And I, I don't know why I even checked it. Two o'clock show. The airport's half an hour from the building. Damn, we jumped out of bed, put our clothes on, head 90 miles an hour downtown Houston, had the building, called to the building to tell them we're on our way. We got there. 
we're like 15 minutes from our match. We just got in, put our clothes on, boom, the bell rang, jumped in the ring, had the marathon match. Uh, not a mar we had our wrestling match. Went back to the hotel, went to bed. You know, it was, it was crazy like that. But we had great matches. There was one match. Uh, there's only one problem with a match like that. If you get injured early in the match, you can't, can't go home early. It's, you're going an hour. In Chicago at the Horizon, my brother and I against the Rockers, 15 minutes into the match, uh, Marty Gennetti gives me a power slam, shoots me in, gives me a power slam from the ropes. As I land, his elbow landed in my armpit, tore a ligament in my arm. So we're 15 minutes in the match. I, I felt it. When he landed, his whole weight was in the air, boom. My arm went like this. I couldn't move. I'm like, damn. And I knew it was bad. I couldn't move my arm. I got tagged my brother. I said, I'm injured. We went the whole match. One of one fall to one fall. We went overtime. Uh, that is an injury I still feel today, though. And that was 1989. That one I still feel. <clears throat> that I got back to the hotel at night, kept the ice bag under my arm the whole night. The next day I was in Sacramento, California. On the flight, had an ice bag under my arm the whole flight going to California. You get there, the doctor wants to take my pressure. And uh, I said, oh, I'm taking my right arm. I couldn't move my left arm. I said, uh, take my right arm. No, no, I want to do the left arm. Well, I said, I just pulled the muscle last night. Uh, I'd rather do it. Let me see that. He went to take it, couldn't move it. He put his, heart, his finger under my armpit. There was a tendon as big as my finger here sticking out like a web under my armpit. He says, you're not getting in the ring. I said, look, I'm in California. I came here. I want to get in. He says, you can't. He says, you're this close to that snapping and you'll need operation. You'll be out for a year. Anyways, I said, look, I'll work out a deal with you. I'll work with my brother. I won't get in the ring. We'll just go to the ring. I like him wrestling, but we'll just work it to where I never step foot into the ring. He says, I'm at ringside. If you put one foot in the ring, I'm stopping the match. I said, okay. That's what we did. We had to do that for a while because I couldn't move my arm.